All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Thank you very much. We're live. Okay, so what we need to do is as follows. We're going to take a look at uh, a review of uh, some of the questions that we took a look at yesterday. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a look at three different questions today. One with uh, So this is sample problem number uh, three from the old textbook. Uh, page 131 and this was a question where you had a steel ball 3.5 kilograms that is being uh, uh, swung in a vertical plane uh, at the end of a rigid steel rod at a constant velocity so V constant and a radius of 1.2 meters 1.2 meters it has a frequency of 1.0 Hertz Okay, uh, and the question was to calculate the tension at the top and the tension at the bottom. Okay. Okay, um, so we said that if my object is being twirled or swung in this vertical plane, I have, these are my two uh, locations, top and bottom. Actually, my FBD is going to be like so. So your tension, of course, is against your centrifugal force and your gravity going in the same direction at the top. And at the bottom, tension against your centrifugal force, which is pushing outward, and gravity. So top and bottom. Okay. And then we said uh, that we would calculate our uh, FT at the top by doing the following we say FT plus FG which is what is making my centripetal acceleration which equals to 4 pi squared R M times F squared and I'm looking for my FT at the top now normally what we said also is that if I have a minimum velocity then my tension at the top is usually minimum okay and my tension at the bottom is usually maximum so bottom maximum tension, top minimum tension. Normally that's how it goes. In fact, you could have a situation where you're going at a minimum velocity where the tension at the top is literally zero. It could happen. Okay? You might have questions like that in your textbook or in the future. Hint, hint. Okay. All right. So FT equals to 4 pi squared M R M F squared minus FG. Or minus mg okay uh, so your ft at the top is going to be 4 pi squared r which is 1.2 m which is 3.5 frequency which is 1 squared minus 3.5 times 9.8 and uh, what do we end up with at the top from yesterday 131.5 newtons at the top okay and now we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom so FT at the bottom now of course my tension is larger than my gravity FT minus FG which equals to 4 pi squared MR F squared and you got FT which equals to 4 pi squared M R F squared plus MG okay and you have 4 pi squared 3.5 times 1.2 times 1 squared 
plus 3.5 times 9.8. And what was your FT at the bottom? 200.1. So 200.1 newtons. So clearly we can see there is a difference between the tension at the top and the tension at the bottom. At the bottom, maximum tension. At the top, minimum tension. So this was one of our examples that we did yesterday. Okay, now we're going to continue and do another example with a car on a ramp. And uh, when we're doing a car on a ramp, uh, we are going to start out with no friction first, and then we're going to do friction after. Okay, are we good with this? Can I erase this? Okay, so uh, let's erase it. And this was sample problem number two, old text again, uh, page uh, 130. And this is car on a ramp, okay, without friction. And of course, what we said was, when I have my car on a ramp, we're not saying that the whole ramp is at an angle, we're saying, so the road is flat, but the road, sorry, I should say, the circle is flat, but the road is on a ramp. And your car was something like this. Yes, yes. This is a car from the back. Okay, you can laugh at my drawings. You know, like five years down the road, when you're bored, you could come back to these videos and then laugh, make a comment. <laughs> okay, anyways. So this is your Fn, and then we said we're going to do Fnx, Fny, Fnx, and of course my gravity straight down, and there is no friction on the roadway. So it's a frictionless road. Of course, this is just a textbook question. This does not exist on Earth. Okay, you're not going to have a frictionless road ever. And this right here is your radius, and the radius is 85 meters. Okay? Now, what we said in this situation was my coordinate plane is like so. Previously, when we did a ramp question, something like that, your coordinate plane was on a ramp as well at an angle. Okay, here we're flattening my coordinate plane. So, uh, when we do this question, uh, we started out first by saying, well, what is my F net Y? Well, F net Y, of course, is zero in the Y direction. And in the Y direction, you have FNY, which equals to FG. Now, unlike what we did before, where we did FN equals to FGY, now we're changing it up. We're saying FNY equals to FG. So there is your vector component going up. There is your vector component going now. Those two are equal to each other. FNY being FN cos of theta. By the way, this right here was 19 degrees. So therefore, this right here is also 19 degrees as I said prove to yourself that it is 19 degrees and check it out and you get mg Okay, so fn equals to mg divided by cos theta and so your fn equals to uh, mass of the car that was given was uh, 1100 kg so r was 85 meters okay and angle was 19 degrees Okay, so you're going to do uh, 1100 times 9.8 divided by cos of 19. Now, you don't want to go about solving it, so let's leave it as is. I've, okay, so I'm just going to leave it as mg divided by cos 19. It's easier to, to deal with it. So, mg divided by cos of 19. Now, we're going to go in the y, in the x direction, f net x. Of course, f net x also equals to fc, correct? centripetal acceleration, which equals to uh, Fnx, which equals to, um, which equals to Mac, centripetal acceleration times mass. Now Fnx in the x direction is made up of Fn sine of 19, which equals to mass times acceleration. Now what we're going to do is we are going to sub this into here. Okay, and you end up with mg sine of 19 divided by cos of 19 
which equals to MAC. My M and my M will cancel out. Sine over cos will become tan, so G tan theta equals to AC. Okay. Now, of course, our formulas for uh, MAC could also be written down as the following. We know that MAC is the same as MV squared over R. Okay. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do right here. Instead of AC, I'm going to put V squared over R. Okay. Bring the R up. So you get G R tan theta, which equals to V and square root. So V equals to G R tan of 19. Okay, um, we are going to continue, finish it off. So, the velocity that you need, minimum velocity, is 9.8 times 85 times 10 of 19. And I believe the velocity comes out to about 16.9 meters per second. So this is the minimum velocity required for a car for it to be able to go around this curve. And uh, this, of course, is provided by your Fnx right here. That is your main force that is controlling this. And the next part of this question was, does mass have an, have an effect on the velocity that you require for you to go around the curve? And of course, since mass cancel out both sides, the answer is no, all of vehicles, regardless of mass. Need this velocity, 16.9 meters per second. So mass has no effect on the velocity that you require for you to move around the curve. Yes. Would you get the wrong answer? No, you should still get the right answer. You'll still get the same thing if you solve for it. I just saw it, did it this way. Okay, now remember what I said was when we do this on the test, you are showing me the work. You're not just going to go straight to GR tan theta, but you're going to show me. In fact, your formula sheet has GR tan theta on it, but you can't use it. You have to show me how you got GR tan theta. Oh, you're welcome, of course. Okay, are we good with this? So this was... The second sample problem that we're going to do. Now, the third sample problem that we're going to take a look at is going to take a look at um, is going to take a look at what happens to a car on a ramp when we add friction to it. And this is from the new textbook, so we're going to use the new textbook. Can I erase this? Yep. Erase it. I have two minutes. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. There's one more thing that I wanted to point out, which is to do with roller coasters. So when you have roller coasters and you have something like a loop-de-loop, -loop, so if you have this, okay, this is supposed to be a, a loop. Oh, please don't laugh. Okay. Okay. Okay, if that's much better. So imagine there's your radius right here. Okay. Now when we're talking about a loop-de-loop -loop, uh, for a roller coaster, one of the rules is that the Fn right here, it's going to be Fn plus mg, which equals to mv squared over r. Right at the top, the Fn. And you're like, what do you mean by Fn? Well, if you have a cart that is going in this loop, in the inside of the loop, why doesn't it fly off? Well, because there is Fn that's holding that cart onto the loop, right? So there is an Fn at the top right here, which is holding onto it. Now, what is that Fn? So one of the rules of thumb is, in a loop-to-loop, -loop, that always is M2 mg, always at the top. So top Fn is 2 mg. I just want you to remember that. Hint, hint. Yes. Uh, for now, we're going to look at it and explain it as it's 2 mg. Don't worry about the why. Okay? It's more calculus required, which is beyond the scope of this course. Yes, excellent. Thank you very much.